So I was just sitting here working on Hazel, and I figured now would be a, a good time to do one of these Hazel devlogs. What's up you guys, my name is The Cherno, welcome back to another Hazel devlog. Let's talk about what I have done, if anything. The last couple weeks have been pretty rough in terms of Hazel work, because I'm getting into the into some of the more gruesome parts. Making a game engine isn't easy, I've said that before, a lot of times I don't think I need to say that for you to realise that. But I will say it's also an incredibly rewarding experience, because I feel like I'm finally getting to the point where you can kind of maybe make something with Hazel. What I wanted to talk about specifically today though was the importance of debugging, and I don't just mean debugging as in fixing your code. I mean, obviously that's important. What I mean is creating debugging tools along with what it is that you're doing. So normally the way that I like to work is that, is this camera crooked? Normally when I'm writing a feature that is moderately complex, I like to make sure that I am aware of what is going on. It sounds really simple, but it's something that I can't say everyone does, unfortunately. A lot of people seem to just try and write code or copy and paste code from other places and just kind of jam it in, hit F5, they see it running, and then they move on to the next kind of stage or the next feature that they want to add. But that's not really a good way to write code. And the reason is that if you don't understand holistically what is going on with the piece of code that you've written or copied and pasted from somewhere, there, there are probably issues with it, and those issues are probably gonna come back and either bite you or your player, if you're making a game, at some point in the future. This absolutely doesn't just have to apply to code that you've copied and pasted from somewhere, and thus you don't know how it works. This can apply to your own code as well. Once you start working on some fairly complicated features, you might get to the point where you're not even sure yourself if you understand what you've done and what you've written, even though it, it seems to work. But fortunately, there's almost always something you can do to understand the problem better, whether it be putting up some graphics on the screen that help you actually visualize what's going on, or just making sure that you're printing the right amount of debug information, or just providing as much feedback to yourself about what the computer is actually doing as possible. And a good example of this is something that I ended up adding when I was dealing with the scene system that I'm dealing with right now. What I've added into Hazel over the last couple of weeks, specifically, I've made it a lot more robust, but the biggest problem that I had that I talked about in the last devlog was what happens when we hit play and we want to actually play the scene. The thing is, we don't just want to enter a play state and then play the game and then enter like an edit state. We want to be able to essentially fully reset the scene when we play. But playing a scene is something that is quite complicated. A lot of things will happen when you hit play. There could be physics simulations, entities are scripted. They can be scripted through C Sharp. So they could create other entities, they could create or remove components. You know, you have a full kind of simulation of like a world going on. How do you how do you stop that simulation and go back to the edit scene? And that's quite a complicated thing because there are a lot of features that you actually want to have running in the editor even though they might be part of the actual runtime of the game. For example, with the whole scripting system, you need to be able to see what public variables your scripts have so that you can easily set them per entity from the editor. That requires the script engine to actually be up and running. And then what happens when you hit play and then stop again and then play again and then stop again? It trust me, it gets it gets complicated. One thing that really helped me when making sure that this system of mine was working was just making sure that my data structure, which was like a map of a map of a struct, which had a map of a map inside it, as well as some other data, I mean it gets deep. Making sure that I could actually inspect that entire data structure in I am GUI so that I could make sure that I was aware of what was going on. By being able to actually see what, what was even inside that map of map of map of maps, that, that itself was just so useful and I could immediately spot problems with it. So the moral of the story is if you're working on something complex, if you're working on something that you feel is way over your head, Take a breath, don't try and set artificial deadlines for yourself if, if you're just working on a hobby project. Try and take it slow and actually make sure that the code that you're writing is not just the code to solve the problem, but code to make sure that you understand what's going on and code that will help you debug the problem and make sure that your solution is actually working correctly. I think that if you take the time to lay that groundwork, you're gonna have a much better result because just like building a house on a foundation that's completely weak is a bad idea. If your foundation is weak, all the code that you keep piling up on top of it, it's gonna be a mess. Anyway, just some things to think about. 
let's take a look at what I've done. So like last time, we basically have this blank scene. I'm gonna go file open and I'll open this pink sunrise modified scene, which isn't even pink sunrise. But anyway, we have this scene here. We have an entity. I'll select it and move it into the middle just to get it a little bit better. I've got this uh, outline effect that I'm currently trialing. I just added it now. It's just a slightly better kind of selection to let us know what's going on. So what happens at the moment is I've got a camera in this scene. I've got this test entity and I've also got this, what's called empty entity. I'll just rename it to sphere because I think that's stupid. So with these three entities, this test entity has a script on it that does a whole bunch of things. And in fact, a lot of this was just me testing public variables. But if I increase the velocity, this is essentially just a VEC3 that I'm adding to the transforms position every frame. If I hit play now, you'll see that this will actually move. And I can actually click on test entity. I can see everything happening. I can manipulate these variables in during the runtime and everything is pretty cool. Don't mind the rotation going up. These are, again, these are just random variables that I'm testing. If I hit stop now, you can see that everything goes back to where it was. That's pretty cool. But before I continue, I wanna talk about this script engine debug panel, which I'll just kind of leave over here. This is what I'm talking about. This was me adding the debugging support. You can see that what this actually has is a list of scenes. This is the actual script engine runtime, and this is that map of maps that I was talking about. We have a scene here, and under the scene, if I click on this scene, we have a list of entities that actually have script runtime. So if I look at the test entity, the test entity has a script component. That means that it is actually, it has to be registered through the script engine. If I look at the test entity, that's the module that it's using. It's called example.script. And you can see these are the public variables that we've exposed through C Sharp. Now, when I hit play and it starts playing the scene, you can see a new scene gets created because this is the scene that we're currently playing. And it also has like a runtime version of all of these things. Now, the intended behavior here is when I hit stop, this scene should get destroyed and everything here shouldn't cease to exist. But what actually happens, as you can see, is if I hit stop, the scene actually remains. Everything else gets dropped, which is correct, but I'm actually leaving behind an empty scene. And you can see that every time I hit play and stop here, well, it's just creating more and more scenes. This is what I'm talking about. Something like this, I don't think I would have ever picked up because the only reason I would have picked this up is if I put in some kind of breakpoint somewhere and I inspected the map through my debugger and I saw that, oh, this scene map is huge. It's got so many scenes in it, whereas it really shouldn't have more than two. And since each time we hit play, it creates a completely new runtime scene with its own kind of identifier, they're never really going to clash and it's never going to run into the problem of this scene already exists. But by seeing this visually, by being able to visualize this data structure in I'm GUI and seeing what's actually going on, you can see how much insight this, this actually puts in. There are a few other things that this script engine debug panel is really useful for. The camera entity here currently well, it doesn't have any behavior associated with it, but what I can do is add a script component to somehow try and define some behavior for it. I've got this C-sharp class here called basic controller, which has some very basic behavior. You can see it's got a public speed variable here that's exposed into the editor, and then an update function that basically responds to the user input and sets the transform. It's in the namespace example and it's called basic controller. So I should be able to add this into my camera script component. If I go back to Hazel here, under module name inside this, script module that I've added in. Currently, the only way to really do this is to type in the name. So if I type in example.basiccontroller, and you can see by the way that it's red at the moment because there's nothing, there's no module, there's no class matching this name yet. If I finish typing it, you can see immediately we get that speed variable. And if we inspect the scene, I think it was this one, you'll see that there's also now the camera entity is inside this scene. And here we have example.basiccontroller because now this camera script component has been registered with this basic controller script. And now it exists inside the script runtime. So this also was very important because you can see if I get rid of it and start typing something else, this is now gone. There's now no script associated with this whatsoever. But if I bring it back, there we go, it appears. So I can set my speed to something like five. And if I hit play, you can see I can now move using the arrow keys. And if I go back to my camera component, I can adjust the speed to whatever I want and move this around. So this is all working correctly. So moral of the story is visualize your data. It's really, really useful. One other thing I'll show you guys is another pretty cool thing that I've added, which is the ability to actually hot reload these scripts. 
So let's say I wanted to do something fairly simple with this sphere. Maybe I just wanted it to kind of sink over time, just kind of gravitate downwards. There's no script that does anything like that. So if I go back to Visual Studio, under source, I'll add a new item here and we're going to actually write a completely new class and we'll call this sync. I'll put it under the example namespace. I'll add an on create function, although this isn't really required, this won't do anything, and an on update function, which takes in a time step. I'll expose a variable here called sync speed. It'll be a float and then copying some code for the translation from my basic controller class and making sure that I'm using the Hazel namespace. We also need to make this an entity. I should now be able to just adjust the Y translation by subtracting the sync speed times the time step every update. All I'm gonna do now is build this entire solution here, which is really just the example app DLL. And now back in Hazel, I can hit file reload C sharp assembly. And just like that, I should now be able to add that script component here. So we called it example.sync. You can see it appears immediately. We have our sync speed variable. I can set it to a value here. And if I hit play, you can see that now we have that syncing behavior for the sphere. I can also click on the sphere while it's running and change this to like a negative value or something like that, and it will float upwards. And if I, of course, stop it, everything will reset. Back in camera, I could also adjust this and change this to be the sync. And now the camera will just sync, as you can see. It's actually syncing at the same speed as the sphere, so that might be something you want to change. But ultimately, there we go. So I'm really excited about all of these changes because as you can see, you can start piecing together a dynamic interactive scene inside Hazel, which is super cool. As hard as it is working on this stuff, I think it's really rewarding when you get to a point where things just kind of start to work. It's really cool to see and it's very motivating. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the like button if you did. If you are interested in Hazel and you would like to support its development, please check out my Patreon in the description below. I also have it on the screen. Apart from getting access to all of this source code in its current state, you'll also get access to weekly live streams where I develop this kind of stuff. So if you are interested in that and want to help support the development of this or use it for your own purposes, then please help support it. That's pretty much all from me. Let me know what you guys think of this. If you want me to talk more in depth about a specific thing, then let me know what it is you want me to talk about. I said there was a lot to say about the various scene systems and scene serialization, and there's just so much stuff to talk about, and I honestly want to, but I also have to remember that I'm sacrificing development time to make certain videos. And a lot, that's why I think a lot of them do turn out to be just these rambles from me. And I don't know how many people are interested in those specifically, but the thing is if I sit down and actually plan a good video of how like the scene system in Hazel works, that's probably around a day just gone. And I mean, I'll enjoy that day, don't get me wrong, but it's also a day that I need to think about allocating specifically for that and not for working on something else. So these kind of chill videos are a lot easier to make. And if you do want to hear me talk about something specific or even give you a bit of a demo, I'm definitely going to do that soon. Once I polish this version of Hazel Dev up and it can actually be used to make a game, I'm going to probably try and revisit that Flappy Bird game that I made in an hour, but try and actually do it through C Sharp using some of these things. I'll also probably be adding physics components soon. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Goodbye.